What's up everybody, my name is Ryan Krause and this is the Crucible Coachworks YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be working on the slant nose and making a panel for the lower quarter panel on the passenger side. So without any further ado, let's get to it. All right, so what we're gonna be doing today is taking this panel right here, which is an update I made to our original design, which you can see on the other side of the car when I get there, um, and I'm gonna be copying it to the other side of the car. So what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to make a pattern I'm gonna have to take the pattern, I'm gonna have to mirror it, and then I'm gonna to to translate that to a new fresh sheet of, sheet of metal, and then after that, shape that to be the mirror form of this. So let's go ahead and get started on the pattern, and then we'll go from there. All right, so I got my first layer of tape down here. It's a low tack masking tape. Um, after you do that, you take your Sharpie or whatever you want to use. I use these Milwaukee, um, what, Igsol markers. I love these things. Anyway, mark your important feature lines. So I marked my line here for the uh, edge of the quarter panel. And I also marked the edge up here. And then I'm also, I didn't mark it yet, but I'm gonna mark this bend mark here too. Um, after that, we're going to go ahead and use this other tape. It's like a packaging tape that is reinforced. I'm gonna put this over top in a different direction and it's gonna lock in the shape, but also get us, give us a good pattern to use too. So number one, I can use it as a pattern to get my first cut for the sheet metal. And number two, I can also use it as a profile gauge to make sure it lays flat and it should hold a little bit of form from this. So let's keep going, going. Packaging tape is over top now. You can see I have it going vertically, whereas the first tape was going horizontally. Let's give a nice, cross pattern to hold the, the shape of the panel underneath. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel it off and I'm gonna trim the excess with some scissors and then we're gonna be ready to go to make the panel. So what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna trim all the excess tape off of the pattern I made. Um, I'm sure you're probably wondering why I'm taking so much time when I can just use paper or you know, even just masking tape that's larger, or um, heck, I could probably even just take some measurements and eyeball the panel. Um, so with metal shaping, it's very important that you take the time to properly get good good data off your panel before you make your, make your new panels. Um, it's very important because you want to start with the most accurate piece of sheet metal that you possibly can. If you're going to start with a rough panel that is either which way, you'll possibly end up with a panel that's too small or you'll end up just fighting yourself constantly throughout the whole creation of your new panel. Um, so this is the way that I've learned that works best for me, especially when it comes to making a panel, um, taking a pattern for a panel that I'm gonna be making again. Um, sometimes if you're gonna be making a piece or a part that is for, a one-off patch panel or whatever, um, maybe this isn't the way for you because it is very time consuming and you don't want to waste time on it. Um, because this, this way is very, this, this, this pattern or this pattern rather will last for a very long time. It's plastic on the outside. Um, it's good tape in the back. It's strong. It'll retain its shape over time still. So this is what I'm going to be using for more patterns later on to make more slant noses. Um, or, you know, I'll also be using like, a, I know you also be making bucks and stuff too. So I'll have multiple ways, um, multiple avenues to make panels. And I keep all these, all these patterns. It's important to keep all your patterns for future use because who knows, you might be reusing again. So you'll see, you'll notice that this patch panel, or not patch panel, sorry. This pattern like retains shape. Like it wants to spring around. Um, this flange wants to tip over on its own. The centerpiece here will hold itself up off the table. I don't know if you can see that on the table or not because of the camera angle, so I'm gonna move the camera a little bit. It's probably hard to see on the camera there, but it literally wants to hold itself up a little bit. There's a little gap here. Um, it's because it retains the shape of the panel. It helps for the panel creation, and I'm gonna show you how in a little bit here. But first, let's cut our panel.
All right, so we got it cut down now. Um, I did flip it over and sharpie this side to make sure it's for the right side of the car, so the other side. Um, many have asked on TikTok what shear I use, and it's a Makita branded throatless shear. Um, I love this thing. Some people don't like it because of the way it wraps around. I don't mind it that much. It can be a little annoying. I don't know if you saw the time lapse where like, I had to kind of fight a little bit to peel up the panel and cut across when I had already had to cut it going this way. It can be a little annoying with that, but otherwise I I like it. I've actually, so the dies, there's actually multiple sides to the dies. I've only ever used the one side and you actually just rotate them for the sharper sides. I've been using this for three years now and I have never rotated it and it still cuts just fine. Um, it's honestly pretty impressive. Um, when I went to a class with Lasse, or Lasse in um, California, this is the one he used and the one he recommended also. So that's where that came from. What we're gonna do next is I'm going to hold this up to the car and we're going to look at the radiuses and we're gonna mark out where the shapes start and we're going to just go from there. So the body panel obviously has lots of shape to it. And shape is defined as, well, my definition of shape, I'm not gonna give you the English definition or dictionary definition because I don't know it offhand, but shape is when a panel has stretch or shrink to it and form uh, actually is when a panel has bend to it and you can just easily write it. So the easiest way to remember that is a difference between shape and form is form can be easily reversed, shape cannot. You can't just do it by hand, you have to use a machine or a hammer or something kind of, some kind of implement that is more than just bending with your hands. So this panel has a lot of shape because it has this curve here that not only does it wrap around, it also goes this way. So it's like a multi, um, it's not quite a reverse curve. It might count as a reverse curve actually, uh, but it has a curve here in multiple directions. And then we have this little flange that's flat, but it still does, it still has a little bit of curve to it. It's flat, and then we have our bender on the back side that has shape to it as well. So we're gonna look at the panel here. We can kind of let's look here. We can hold the camera a little better. Um, the shape kind of starts like here, ish, and then it begins and wrap around this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my planching dies here, and then we're gonna hold them up and look at different radiuses, and then we're gonna write them down on this panel so I can easily replicate this side. Um, but to start here, actually, I'm gonna. Don't mind me is accidentally stopping the camera there. I'm gonna pull my marker out here and we're going to mark this. So this starts literally pretty much at the cut line and comes down to about here. So it starts pretty much the cut line here, about down like that. I'd say that's pretty close to the, yeah, I'd say it's pretty close. Maybe, maybe a little shorter here. Um, and then we're gonna get our radiuses. So actually I'm just gonna walk over now. This is the easiest way to do it. Over here, we have our planching hammer dies. I'm just gonna grab the whole rack. See if I can not drop it. Make everybody nervous at home. So these dies have different radii on them. I see radiuses all the time, but it's actually radii. And the way this works, we have these lower dies well, on a planching hammer, the upper die is flat and the lower die is a radius. And these different crowns on these dies will make that same radius be on the panel. So we have the marked here, like this one's six. This one's probably like what, 12, 24. Um, so I can look at the panel here. I can guess, I'm gonna guess five's probably gonna start. We can hold our die up here. I'm gonna get the camera to be the right side. Um, but you can hold your die up and you can look at it. A good angle here, I can't find a good angle, but if you look at it, you can see where it con contacts and be able to tell what radius you're using. I also have die gauges. They're over, well, they're over there, <laughs> but they're for the outer radius, not inner radius. So I'm gonna have to make do. So I wanna go, down, go ahead and just write down these radiuses and then I'm gonna show you guys. All right, so after using my dies here, I came up with these different radii. Um, we have a flange which gets folded over. Um, it'll probably have to get stretched on the edge because it wraps around, but I'll go over that. Shrink or stretch, depending on how I want the, this segment here to lay. Um, after that, we have a four, a five, a six, and we have a 7.4 that runs up here. Um, that's gonna get us a rough close. And then after that, we'll have to just kind of dial it in. 
Um, but it'll give us the correct amount of stretch, I believe, to get us close enough that I can eat hammer dial it the rest of the way. Um, the last time when I made this panel, I actually made an example video for TikTok because people can, wouldn't believe that I could do this work without, you know, higher end machinery. So I did this one with by hand with a shot bag and a mallet. So this one, we're gonna mix it up and we're gonna use the planching hammer. Um, I need to clean up my lines here and stuff too and make them a little crisper, but we can do that later. So let's keep on moving. I should add another way you could do this too is with a profile gauge. You could take your profile gauge, push it up against your panel, get the shape that you have on there, lay it down, and then take another radius gauge and measure the radiuses as you go. Um, and you would measure where you took your line here, mark it on the panel, and put your radius in there. That's probably the most accurate way you could possibly do it. I'm roughing it in right now, so I'm not gonna do that, but that's another way you could approach that. All right, so I'm gonna be using the planching hammer to do our initial stretch for this panel. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with uh, the lowest radius, which is 7.4, so it's the lowest crown, and then work my way up and in. Uh, also, you need to make sure that you're wearing ear protection, eye protection, and hand protection for this because, well, eye protection is probably a little overrated, but I think it's something you should do it anyway. Um, but hands for sure, because you will cut your hands at the edge of the panel, and ear protection because it's very loud. Um, so this is the top side here. I, mark, I also mark both sides of the panel because when you're working on the planching hammer, the sides that you mark your face down because it stretches that way. So I just roughed in on the side so I can see what I'm doing. consistent passes as you can see um let's walk through a little better as you can see my passes are very tight over each other and i try to keep the speed consistent as well because as you're going through you want to make sure that the stretch is very consistent throughout the whole panel otherwise you can have ripples so i get my 7.4 i'm going to jump up to the six now and then the five and then the four and then i got a little five in the bottom here All right, so we got our stretch in now. Um, as you can see, we got our, our radius here that goes from shallow to deeper to deeper to pretty deep here on the four. Um, now, because the panel has been stretched only in the center, it goes a little wonky, and you can see the edge here actually tips upwards, and we're actually gonna tip back. So that means if I were to try to bend this edge here and flatten it over, it would get all wrinkly because there's too much material here, which is why it's like baking up. So what I have to do actually is shrink this part here so this let it wrap down. So we're gonna go ahead and just gonna move over to the, the kick shrinker. We're gonna shrink that down. So the way this machine works is when I when I step on this, there's jaws, and these jaws squish together and they crunch the metal together. So it essentially shrinks it. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this panel. I'm gonna look at our our flange here. I'm gonna go halfway through here. Start going in. Shrink. Shrink a little lighter. Shrink a little lighter. Middle pressure. Heavy pressure middle pressure, light pressure, middle pressure, heavy pressure. I'm gonna keep doing that. Sometimes when you're using this machine, you gotta kind of like put light pressure and it's kind of tip your, your panel over where you want to be at the same time. You can use it as like a vice almost. So while you're shrinking, you can force the panel to bend the direction you want it to go. 
I got my pre-stretch, I got my pre-shrink here, and this edge here is probably gonna have to need pre-stretch for another flange, but I'm gonna get there in a little bit. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm working from here out. So I have this already, which is, this is roughed in, it's not that great, it's, it's, it's there, that's about it. Um, this flat part here, I need to get this edge crisper so I can work with what's with the metal here and keep it trapped in that. And then after I get this where I want it to be, I'm gonna fold this flange over. So what I'm gonna do, do next here is I'm gonna use the bead roller and I'm gonna get this line nice and crisp. All right, so instead of the bead rollers, you have two flat dies, upper and lower. I'm not gonna use a lot of pressure, just enough to make this edge tip. That's it. I don't wanna stretch it. I don't wanna make it be like a slip roll or anything. Um, so I'm gonna set my speed to the lowest setting here so I can get a nice smooth transition. Um, when using a bead roller, it's important to watch from the end that's feeding, because if you watch from the other side, you're not gonna get your line. Um, anyway, let's, let's go with it. So you can see now I have a nice crease here. Um, it's still a little rough on the inside and outside. It's because I shrunk a little bit too much there maybe, or stretch a little much here, it has a little bit of buckle. That'll all massage out then, so I'm not worried about that right now. Push this around a little bit. Use the old English knee. Get our shape where we want it to be. Still picking up a little bit here, so I'm gonna spin it around here and just shrink a little bit more. I think what I'm gonna do here next is I'm gonna tip this flange over um, to a nice 90 so that it matches how it's supposed to be in the inner corner there. So that'll help me, uh, again, keep framing what I need to do and kind of lock in the shape we can go from there. So think about like a piece of paper. If you take a flat piece of paper and you try to do a nice 90 degree bend in a straight line, it'll flop over. But if you're trying to do the same shape like this and flop it over, it's going to actually need to be extra paper there to make that because it's gonna want to, almost have to tear it to make it do that bend. So I'm gonna have to stretch this first before I bend it over and just press a pre-stretch so that it'll lay the way I want it to. Otherwise, it's gonna like walk the panel up over the place. So I'm gonna go ahead and stretch this and then we're gonna go keep moving. So what I'm gonna be using here is called a linear stretch die. This die, rather than having like a, like a ball-shaped crown, it's actually a flat piece that has curves just on the sides. So it allows the metal to stretch side to side rather than this way. So it's a linear stretch like it stretches in a line. Um, now this clenching hammer, it'll allow the die to spin. So what I have to do is I have to actually tape it in so it doesn't rotate on me. So now you can see it's stretched, um, so it has like a little bit of a wave to it because there's more material in this, in this distance than it wants to be, so it kind of walks around. So that's how I know I have a good stretch there. I'm guessing how much stretch I need, and then I'm gonna tip it over here, and then we'll see if I did enough or too much. Probably noticed that my shirt changed mid video. It's because I started this video yesterday at the end of the day when I had some extra time when I planned to do this video on Saturday, which today is a Saturday. So, got a couple hours of work in yesterday, which most of the time was spent setting up because the normal work we do around here requires me to use a lot of the same equipment in other locations. 
around the shop. So I had to kind of wrangle everything together. Now, because I pre-stretched this flange, as I'm bending this over, it's not causing it to like roll in on itself. Normally, if you had not stretched this and you bent this over, it would kind of, it would kind of just like curl up. But because it's not, it's stretched instead. It's not, it's not causing it to happen. Getting off the path here a little bit. All right, let's do the same thing again here. It's rolling on the edge, so I'm gonna grab a hammer. I have the upper die. You can change the depth of the dies. This upper die, you can move it forward and back for whatever beads you're doing. I have this die slightly forward so that there's a little bit of a overlay. So this die's here, this one's here. So it has a nice little uh, step to it. So I can butt the other die up against it and this upper die will still have contact over the panel. All right, so we got our panel here. I cleaned it up. I wheeled it a little bit. I used a planishing hammer. I hammered and dollied it. I used a slapper on it. I got it close. It's disrupting. It's, it's not the most perfect panel in the world, but it looks pretty good. Um, we're going to hold it up to the car and see how it holds up to the shape of the car. So I already went ahead and kind of pushed this piece that we're replacing. Sorry, that was loud. Um, this is a piece of replacing. I dropped the rocker down so it doesn't get in the way. Um, so basically, I'm going to just kind of clamp it up here. I'm just going to look at it. So I'm going to clamp it up, then we're going to cut back. All right, so I got clipped up here. Um, now bear with me because I have it sleeved over the original quarter panel. So it's actually putting pressure on the back side here, both down here and up here. So it's gonna splay it out a little bit awkwardly and it's gonna give it a little weird radius. But um, yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. We got a nice flow that runs through the arch here. It looks natural. It doesn't look like it's out of place. Um, the edge came out pretty nice. The radius looks correct. And, but yeah, we got a little lump on here. Ignore that, it's because of the panel underneath. I'm not gonna cut it yet. Um, it splays out a little farther than I'd like. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. So here's the passenger side. Flows nice, looks a lot better than it did before. Then comparatively, here's the driver side, which was the original side that I started with. As you can see, it's pretty much an exact mirror. So I think that about does it for this video. Uh, we started out with a pattern that we made from that rocker. We mirrored it, flipped it, cut it out of steel, shaped it, and put it on the other side, and it matches pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and go forward, and I'm gonna scribe it, and I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna weld it in, I'm gonna planish it, all that. Um, and then my next video update will be whatever we're working on for that. So thanks for sticking around, guys. Make sure you, if you don't um, or haven't already, make sure you like and follow, drop a comment, share this, help to get the word out about this build and about whatever information I can teach because I like to show what we can do, but also be able to show you how we do it so that you yourself can learn how to do it. So anyway, until next time, guys. Later.